Hi everybody, I'm Jack from Rambling Rack and I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great start to this weekend. Uh, I wanted to talk about The Long Tomorrow by Lee Brackett, published in 1955. Very strong science fiction novel. I just finished reading it this morning and I, I enjoyed it. it. It was, you know, it was on my mind for a couple of reasons as I was uh, reading it across the past week. And it's, it's a good book. It, uh, it's it, of the atomic age science fiction where the fear of atomic energy and much more specifically the fear of the atomic bomb is pervasive within the book. Um, it's post-apocalyptic and so a nuclear holocaust is posited to have occurred sometime in like the 1960s, 1970s. Um, and then this book is then set about two generations later. Um, so the very oldest characters can remember a pre-nuclear holocaust, you know, United States. The other characters have only ever encountered this uh, small town like um, socially enforced small town society where there's a constitutional amendment that you can't have more than a thousand people or 200 buildings within a certain amount of space. Um, and, and so it like Brackett really captures that fear and, and, you know, permeates that fear throughout the society that she shows, uh, on what ultimately becomes sort of a road novel throughout the, the middle, I don't know, 50% of the book. Um, and quite quite effective as a road novel and the journey that takes us from the Ohio River Valley all the way across to uh, like the Mountain West in the United States. It's an effective book. It, it is well written. Um, it's, it's, a, it's definitely one of those like 1950s classic science fiction books. I read it in the Library of America's um, American Science Fiction of the 1950s anthology and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the window it showed into, into questioning technology, interrogating that. Um, particularly in the aftermath of, you know, 10 years removed from the horror of the thousands upon thousands dying at Hiroshima and Nagasaki when the U.S. dropped the atomic bombs there and, and interrogating, like, what, what does that fear feel like in a society? Uh, even generations later, what could that fear feel like? And uh, it also, you know, we have sort of the road novel aspect, which works, like, startlingly works. Um, it feels, it, it manages to feel of a piece with the book and yet totally this unique section in the middle. Um, and then, uh, there's also this really interesting view of the sort of like revival type religious, uh, organizations that spring up in the aftermath and in, you know, two generations now within this sense of no, very little technology, early 19th century technologies really, plus sort of that second great awakening style of revival religion. And, um, and seeing, like, sort of interrogating those aspects of, of a society uh, in a really interesting way. And it's all through the window of um, Len Coulter, who's like a teenage boy, as the story picks up. And we see his growth and his intellectual growth. You know, he's a character who has doubts. He's, he's really fully formed and is willing to sort of ask the questions that maybe even the reader wouldn't be asking on his or her own. And I think Brackett does that really well. She really captures that sense of constantly like probing it's not just a here's what unfolds and what the story is you know be interested but rather continually having a character who's who's reconciling himself to the decisions he's making who's seeing violence there's a couple of scenes of mob violence that are really well drawn but also quite frightening and from his eyes we see uh the, the frightening effect of it but also how it galvanizes certain decisions he makes in, in, a, in what i found to be an interesting way um, so I, I do enjoy it. I recommend it. I do want to read a quick selection uh, that kind of gives a view of sort of how the technology is handled. Um, Len came out of the thorn apples. Esau, his cousin who joins him on this, uh, his various journeys, leaped up in a guilty panic. He tried to run away and hide the object behind his back and ward off an unexpe unexpected blow. All at the same time, and we saw that it was only Len, he fell back down on the log as though his knees had given under him. What did you want to do that for? He said between his teeth. I thought it was dad. His hands were shaking. They were still trying to cover up and conceal what they held. Len stopped where he was, startled at Esau's fright. What have you got there? He asked. Nothing. Just an old box. It was a poor lie. Len ignored it. He went closer to Esau and looked. The thing was box shaped. It was small, only a few inches across and flat. It was made of wood, but there was a different look about it from any wooden object Len had ever seen before. He could not tell quite what the difference was, but it was there. It had curious openings in it and several knobs sticking out from it, and in one place was a spool of thread fitted into a recess. Only this thread was metal. It hummed and whispered softly to itself. Awed and more than a little scared, Len asked, What is it? 
You know that thing Grand talks about sometimes where the voices come out of the air? TV, but that was big and it had pictures. No, said Esau. I mean the other thing that just had voices. Len drew in a long, unsteady breath and let it go again in a quivering, oh. He reached out a finger and touched the humming box very lightly, just to be sure it was really there. He said, a radio? And so, <laughs> you know, it's like these are, these are boys who've never seen or, or uh, heard a radio before, and it's not even really working, but they can feel it. They can sense the difference, and they get like little static from it. Um, and that's sort of how the technology is handled. It's very rare. It's, it, this is that weird type of science fiction where it postulates a f the future that doesn't yet exist um, while creating events between the present and that future that bring technology back in some ways. Uh, and so it works. It, you know, it's an effective book. I really enjoyed reading it. Brackett, of course, is a great writer. I first encountered Brackett, as probably many of you have, without realizing it, because she was a great screenwriter. She wrote a number of Howard Hawks, who's one of my favorite filmmakers, helped write a number of his screenplays. Um, the Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler, uh, who, where she co-wrote with Faulkner without actually collaborating. Like, they didn't collaborate at all or compare notes at all. They just wrote alternate chapters to have the screenplay put together. Um, Rio Bravo and, and, and a couple of other uh, Hawks films. So that was how I first encountered Lee Brackett, but it was great to read one of her science fiction books. In terms of the post-apocalyptic uh, type of science fiction, two others that jump out um, to me always are The Postman by David Brin, great book. And then one of my all-time favorites that is very different from The Long Tomorrow, but I think uh, kind of interrogates some of the same ideas and some of the same themes around sort of like religion and technology is of course uh, Canical for Leibowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr. Fantastic novel if you haven't read it. Uh, in terms of sort of the, the sense of great, it was like, you know, mid 19th century, second great awakening revival style religion, uh, Flannery O'Connor feels, you know, of a piece with some of the, uh, like this new Mennonite sect that Brackett draws and um, the, uh, the new Ishmaelites, who are essentially a group of nomads who just are hunter-gatherers who live at subsistence style, um, you know, just above the threshold of starvation and just wander the middle of the United States and the Great Plains. Um, and, you know, just this whole world sketched in. But another book that, you know, kind of pushes at some of those questions around religion would be um, Omen Setter's Luck by William Gass. And then, as I mentioned, the road novel. The road novel aspect felt strongest with, uh, uh, it felt a little bit like Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. In, it was shorter. <laughs> it was quite a bit shorter. And there wasn't as much, you know, focus on, like, economics, um, that, that side of society. But it, it felt like someone who had read John Steinbeck and, and distilled some of the better pieces from Grapes of Wrath. So let me know if you've read The Long Tomorrow um, or if you've read any of other Brackett's works or enjoyed her screenplays. And uh, again, I hope you're having a great weekend. Thanks.